All right, the Apple event has just finished and what a disappointment this was. I mean, so many people have already done videos on this. It's all over Twitter, but we were expecting really good things. And what did we get? We got the ability to move some widgets and a bit of better multitasking. So we're going to be talking about just about the actual iPad now and the disappointment relating to it. So if you've got an iPad M1, I really feel sorry for you, but let's get into the video. The screen is fantastic. Let's just start off by saying that. The screen is probably the best screen I've ever seen on an iPad. If you're watching HDR content, if you're not watching HDR content, you're not going to see any difference. But the iPad is fast. It's phenomenal just how quick this is, but it's limited by that software. So iPad OS 15 was hoping to bring some great features from this, where we could use this as our everyday computer. It didn't. It actually didn't bring nothing. I'm so disappointed with this and, and Apple from the, the lack of actually ability and software relating to this. We got some improvements to the multitasking, which we already had. It just made it a little bit easier to use. And then also the uh, widgets. So the widgets were on the left hand side. You can now move them to anywhere on the screen. I mean, who the hell cares about that? We wanted better features. Those are features which you can do on any other iPad, not something you expect at a pro level iPad M1, which is screaming out to do more and more things. We hoped, which was a big wish list for a lot of people, we were gonna get Final Cut Pro in here. We didn't even mention anything to do with it. So we're still stuck with LumaFusion, which is limited. It's not as quick. It's not, they nowhere near the same as using Final Cut Pro. LumaFusion is great for some travel videos or for some low level videos, but anything where you need more special effects or you want to actually scrub through or put uh, speed ramping on, you can't do any of that on LumaFusion. It's very basic. It's better than iMovie 100%. It's probably the best on here without a shadow of the doubt, but it is nowhere near on the level of Final Cut Pro. So what are you gonna be actually using this iPad M1 for? Video editing, you can't edit on this every single day for YouTube, for instance. It'd be so much slower process. What about Photoshop? Photoshop is good on here, that's good, but you're not gonna get the same actual ability that you get on the desktop or on a laptop. The software isn't the same. Lightroom is very good. What else are you gonna use it for? Uh, just watching content, watching YouTube, Netflix. You don't need an iPad M1 for that. Go and get the iPad Air. I honestly am gobsmacked at this, how great the iPad is and how limited it is with the software. But it came clear to me and to a few other people what Apple's absolute intention is. They don't want this to be your everyday go-to laptop replacement. They want you to have an iPad for maybe some drawing on here or watching some content on the sofa, relaxing. And then for actually mobile creation, they want you to go and pick up a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro M1. And then if you're at a desk and you're doing some editing at a desk, you want them to go and pick up a actual iMac. They want you to have all three. And all three are fantastic in their own ways. They don't want you to just have one product and that's going to replace the MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. They want you to have that as well. And then they want you to have this and they want to have the iMac. It's obvious that's what the strategy they're going down. They're not going to kill off the MacBook Air so you could have a really fantastic iPad, which would be brilliant, but they could at least make this better. The file system on here is so slower. Just by clicking on the actual hard drive and drag and dropping on the laptop or on an iMac is so much easier, more fluid than this system. It's better than it was a few years ago, but it is still so limited. And it's a reason why me and a lot of other people could not use this as their everyday computer. If you do, then absolutely credit to you, but I certainly couldn't. I think the actual best feature that came out was saw on Twitter afterwards, that when you are dragging an actual file from the file system to something else, or maybe from a hard drive onto the iPad, before it would just spin round and you have no clue whatsoever what was happening. Now we've actually got a status bar. That's probably the closest you're gonna actually get to the MacBook experience. <laughs> Honestly, it's so disappointed. I was hoping for better things with this. So what I would recommend is, I would say to you, if you need an actual iPad for doing some higher level work, go and get a 2018 or a 2020 model. You do not need the M1 iPad. You get some really good deals now on the older iPads. And for this now, for at least a year, we're not gonna see anything from Apple's end better to worthwhile having an actual M1 model. 
if you need an iPad for just chilling out and watching stuff on Netflix or watching YouTube, doing some drawing on Procreate, go and get the iPad Air or even the eighth generation and save yourself $500. Absolutely pointless getting this. We're so disappointed. If you're needing something to create YouTube videos, to create in work faster, being able to access all the different actually software, which is better than this, just go out and buy the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro M1. You can actually get the Air version cheaper than this actual iPad and it does so much more. You're gonna get final cut on it. You're gonna have the full Photoshop system. Everything's better. And I use that every single day and I will continue to use that every day because it's just so much faster and more. The workflow is better for me by using that than on here. Here, it's also good. It could be done, but so much slower. It takes me probably five times as long actually editing a video on here than it would to do it on Final Cut. And for that reason, I just can't recommend it. So I don't know what to do with that at the moment. I'm still debating. But if, if you haven't got an M1 iPad Pro, I really wouldn't recommend going and buying one. I'd get another iPad Pro or the iPad Air. Certainly, it's just not, it's just disappointing. From the WWDC, we we're all expecting really good things and we got the ability to move widgets and multitasking. Like, seriously? Disappointing. Anyway, guys, hope you found that helpful. Go and check out some of the videos talking about the WWDC and you'll hopefully be as disappointed as we all are. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.